had two messages to preach, but I could only preach one. And, and, and the one, one, one of them was entitled, this is what the devil say, that God's word can't be trusted. And then the other one, because I was speaking about transformed by the word last week, being transformed by trials. Anybody ever going through trials? Yes. I don't know if you've ever seen the popular television show, um, Extreme Makeover. You, you ever seen that? Extreme Makeover. And what happened with Extreme Makeover is that people allow themselves to be put through all kinds of adversity, discomfort, and suffering so that their outward appearance can change for the better. And some of the participants, they actually, when you, when you look at the participants of the show, they don't just go for a new hairstyle or a, a new wardrobe, but they, come, they go for what you call a complete transformation. A complete transformation in their appearance. And the process, as they process themselves, it, the process itself includes cosmetic, plastic, and sometimes even dental surgery. That not only improve how they look, but actually change their whole appearance so completely that it's oftentimes difficult to recognize a person without the before and after picture. But just as the extreme or the participants of the extreme makeover goes through a process, they go through a process of transformation. We who are believers, and this is what God wants for every one of us, to be transformed into the image of his son, Jesus, who is the Christ. Uh-oh. I said, gee, God wants us to be transformed into the image of Jesus, who is the Christ. Like everybody's thinking about dinner. <laughs> so I think you need to preach with me, otherwise I'm going to preach long. If you preach with me, if you preach with me, then we'll finish by 1.30. Amen? Amen. Oh God, that's good. If you don't, well, and if I see some Reverend Big Shepherd coming up here, I'm going to take off my jacket. Because she said, if I preach too long, she's going to pull my jacket. So I'm going to take off my jacket. And, when she, and you know what I'm like, I walk up and down so she can't catch me. The transformation which I'm talking about as the people of God has nothing really to do with our outward appearance, but has everything to do with our inner changes. There is similar, no, similar, similar similarities between these kind of transformations though. And it's this, both mean some kind of discomfort and, some, and both mean pain. Christ, believing that all of their problems will be solved, that they will have a life of perfect peace and harmony from that time on. But unfortunately, that's because many of us as believers too often don't give those who are seeking the complete story when it comes to what it means to be saved. And the complete truth of the matter of the Bible it contains example after example of how men and women of God especially have endured terrible suffering. Not um, so much to do with, not in spite of their faith, but because of their faith. I remember last week saying that the Holy Spirit is God's agent of transformation and the Bible, God's written word, is the instrument in which God uses. But I also come by this week to tell us that there is another element to this transformation. God sometimes uses, or God uses uh, to transform us, adversity. The 
truth and the whole truth is that God not only allows adversities and sufferings in our life or in the life of the believer, but don't sound, don't start me. But sometimes, even if I can say it in the right context, directly causes it. But why? The question is because adversities, when rightly handled, has a way of molding us. So 
son Jesus who is the Christ. But there is something that we need to understand. That he will not be satisfied until that happens. And so my God will use any means necessary to bring it about. Including allowing or sending as much trouble as it takes until we respond to him. And allow him to make the inner changes that we need to become like Jesus. And James in verses 2 of the chapter 1 says, For us, our groundwork for responding to the trials that God allows or sends, it tells us something. He says that we must count it all joy. He said, count it all joy when you fall into various or diverse trials. In other words, when you are faced with a trial. Seem to be at the 
Hallelujah. You ever ask God why? Have you ever seen some stuff going on and, and ask God why? Why? God, why? But I come out to tell you for the non believer, adversity and suffering, particularly the kind that are brought by natural disaster, can seem so arbitrary and senseless. But whether the pain is caused by hurricane or by an earthquake or by illness or by injury or by some action of somebody else, the one who had placed his faith or her faith in God, oh God, we could almost have a difficult time making sense of it all. But I come out to tell us it's not supposed to be that way with a believer. Because when you put your place, place your face in Jesus Christ, though in the midst of our suffering, we may know what God has in mind. In fact, the truth of the matter is many times we don't know what God has in mind. But he allows it. So if he allows it, we can be sure, like what the apostle James said, knowing that the testing of our faith, it produces patience. So God, some, some of us are wondering what, why, why we're going through what we're going through. But I come back to tell you, God's putting you through the mail because He wants to produce faith, endurance. Oh God, have mercy. But the truth of the matter is this: in other words, when you trust God enough, when you trust Him enough to know that He knows. He knows what he's doing, oh God. I wonder if you understand. I come back to tell you that Satan has sent a message to the, to the church. And this is the message that Satan sent by telegram. He sent it from with Eve, first of all. And he sent it like this. He said, God's word is not to be trusted. Oh God, have mercy. I wonder if you understand. He said, listen, God's word is not to be trusted. When, 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 he, when he tackled Eve in the Garden of Eden, he said, what? Good. Come on now. I've had some of my greatest breakthrough 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? You see, when you fall to rock bottom, you fall on the rock, which is Christ. Oh God, what if you understand this today? So brothers and sisters, we better fix our eyes on what God has in mind and all the difficulties themselves. Stop looking and focusing on the difficulties itself. And that's exactly what the Apostle Peter was referring to in 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 to 14, when he said, Beloved, don't be surprised of the fiery ordeal among you. Stop listening, believers. If we're going to really believe and be what God wants us to be, when fiery ordeals come, oh, I was expecting you. Just didn't know it was coming in that form. Don't be surprised, which comes upon you for the testing, as though some strange thing were happening to you. But to the degree that you share the suffering of Christ, he said, keep on rejoicing. It looks like the life of the believer should be a life of rejoicing. Uh oh. Some of you need to understand this, and when you're going through the songs, you need to still rejoice. Oh God have mercy. So that also the revelation of his glory may, be re may, may, may rejoice with exaltation. If you are revived for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of God and of our God resists or rests upon you. But many of us know Apostle Peter, or we know Brother Peter, when we were talking about Brother Peter, many of us will remember Brother Peter with the disease that he had. How many of you remember the disease that Brother Peter had? He had the foot and mouth disease. Oh God, let me tell you what I mean. The one who, though he seemed to have his heart in the right place, oh God, always said the wrong thing. And did the wrong thing at the wrong time. You know, we, have, you know, we, we know some people like that. But I come back to say, don't write them off. Don't write them off, oh God. Uh, uh, we, we, we especially remember when Peter, as one who vowed, he said he vowed that he would never abandon Jesus, even if it meant that he was going to die with him. Only just to look a little bit around the corner, that he not only denied him, but he was he, 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 he denied even knowing him when Jesus was facing the trial and execution. But I want us to understand, that's not face too much upon the, 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 the pre the free, uh, Peter, but let's look at the post Peter. Where Peter, the post Peter, after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the Peter that was filled with the Holy Ghost, oh God, the Peter who wouldn't stop preaching at the name of Jesus Christ in Jerusalem, even through for the face and the threats and the limbs from, from the very people that put Jesus to die. Peter spent the rest, the remainder of his life after Jesus' death, resurrection and ascension, bodily and bravely preaching Jesus, even though doing so meant persecution like many of us have never seen before. But I want us to notice when we look through the scripture, we never see where the apostle Peter said, why me? As he enjoyed these things, instead he pressed forward in which Jesus had called him to do because he knowing that something good was going to happen out of it. People were going to hear about Jesus. And Peter wanted his readers to know that when they were hated, and Peter also wanted us to know that when we're hated, when we're persecuted on the account of Jesus, that we should never mourn, we should never groan, oh God, but instead realize that, that, that we were only going through God ordained trials and we're just partnering with Jesus in his suffering in fact James calls this kind of suffering the test of faith that's a that's a that's a that, that's that's what Peter passed with flying colors and the truth of the matter God wants us to pass the test of faith the test but what's behind the test? If, if many of us have taken tests in school. In fact, even on Wednesday, God, we had a test. 
Because a teacher will not really take the student's word for it that he understands the material. He understands what he's been taught. He wants to, him to go through the test to find out if he really understands what he has been taught. In the old days, I don't hear it so much now, but in the old days, people used to testify and say, listen, comes what may. Yeah. You remember the time? Yeah. Comes what may. Oh God, that person. People don't say that no more because I said, listen, <laughs> I'm not aiming for this, come what may. But I want you to understand that God also wants to see if your mouth is where your heart is. And so you'll go through some testings, and sometimes we're going through some stuff. And the, the truth of the matter, if we were really going to testify, we would say, listen, when I was going through this, God sent somebody. God said, listen, oh God, I want us to understand this. I can't preach it like I need, like I want to preach it. So here's what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to cut this thing right now and come back to it another time. But listen, God said, Peter, James, and count it. Count. In other words, you know what you're doing, um, accounts. Put it on the ledger. See your, your accounts and see what, what, what suffering you're going through. And see what joy comes out of it if you're in the red or in the black. Oh, God, have mercy. But the truth of the matter is this. The Bible says, hear what the Bible says. The Bible says, now faith is the substance of things. Oh, God, have mercy. I want us to understand that the Bible says you can't do anything without faith. Brothers and sisters, I can't wait to tell us about, let me see, maybe about some time ago when I came to this church. But around June, July of last year, I remember, in fact, when I came to the church, I made friends with the, the neighbor next door. Remember the neighbor next door, John? Who allows us to park and block his, 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 his place? What a good man. Let's pray for Brother John. Because not many people would allow us to do that. And listen, you know, with us, we, 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 we don't take it easy, though. We just park up anyhow. In fact, when he's having visitors, he would come by and say to us, Listen, oh, I'm just having some visitors. Is, uh, we're going to have some. He asked to ask permission to park on his property. Maybe because he had an insight. Oh God have mercy. But I remember some time ago when I declared, I want you to understand, we need to believe God. We need to believe God. Listen, I want you to understand, listen, let's not worry about conference. Let's not worry about this and that. Let's worry about what God says. Oh God have mercy. A word came by and said, listen, the property next door belongs to us. I want you to understand that we've been going through this thing from July. In fact, I told you the story when, when I went, but they said, listen, we're too late, we're too late. But I wonder if you understand, God's word cannot return back unto him void. But it must, I wonder if you understand, it must, it must. Oh God, you don't understand, you don't understand. Listen, when God sends his word, hallelujah, he's finally looking. For some willing vessels yes. who will just tell it as it is. Oh God. Oh God. You know, I remember standing up here and saying, listen, tomorrow, this time, oh God, tomorrow we will hear. Listen, some people say to me after the pastor, listen, it's like you put your character on the line. Good. I want you to understand what my character. I come back to tell you that I've never put my character on the line. Because when God tells me something, it's not me. If God doesn't show up, brother Andrew, that's not me, that's him. Oh God. And when I look at the word of God, it tells me that God cannot lie. Oh, somebody needs to understand it. And so, God is saying, Timpton, I want more people who are going to see my face. Or have an entwined relationship. Oh God. Entwined relationship with me. And so when I give you a word, you can say it boldly. You're not saying it for gain. You're not saying it because you, you want people to, to elevate you. You're not saying it because people say, oh, and I'm not, I come back to tell somebody I'm not no old man. Don't come to me. Don't come to me. I'll give you a word when God gives me a word to give you. But apart from that, I'll give you what the written word says. <laughs> oh God. Well, when it comes to You have to know the character of who gives you the word. Yes. And realize that this 
Listen, my God cannot lie. Never. Brother Javon, and Janai, listen, he wasn't here, but God said that next door belongs to us. Oh, God have mercy. And so what he did, he allowed us to occupy the land first. Oh, I want to understand a moment. We will occupy the land. He said, go and take the land. Someone else came back and said, listen. Someone else came back and said, listen, there's giants in the land. There's giants in the land. We come in like grasshoppers. In fact, when the truth of the matter, when I went to, to, to Brother John, to Reverend John, and said to him, listen. He said, listen. I'm not selling, we're not selling at the moment, but I tell you what, I will be retiring in February of 2013, 14. And I'll keep you up to date. Oh, you understand? God has a man on the inside. Jehovah 
child, the one who's civil. He said, listen, the prophet is ours. Remember, we had a, we, I think it was a week of prayer before we had a, a little bit of, we had some prayer meetings anyway. In fact, the truth of the matter, Mother Williams, she scolded me. Uh, many of you didn't know. She scolded me right in the, in the meeting. She said, Pastor, if we want to get that place next door, shouldn't you have called a prayer meeting so we can pray? God have mercy. What I would say is true, you know, Mama. Yeah. True. Yeah. But God had already told us the house next door belongs to yeah. us. God. And so we, I remember going around there and we said we're going to go. I want you to understand. Some people would say that we pray because we went through the back door and the back door was locked. It was, listen, we were trespassing. So some would believe. But the truth of the matter is that if you, listen, I can't trespass. When I go into my own house, I'm not trespassing because it belongs to me. And so we, we opened the back door.